Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sugar House Community Council. Uh, Landon is not able to attend tonight, so I'll be filling in for him. Um, we're not going to have a treasurer's report or a secretary report this evening. Um, we will give updates in our next meeting. So uh, we'd like to start off with Detective Fellows, if he is available. I am. Can you everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. All righty. Um, so I'm sorry, just meeting myself by accident. I want to put some information into the chat for everybody. Um, it's my contact information and some helpful links, and I'll go over those in just a second. But first, let's um, go over the stats for the month of April. <clears throat> so April, there were, um, I pulled all the reports for April. There were 420 for the month of April, which is not much different than March. March, there was 400. And um, the top five calls for service during the month of, of April were as follows. So the top one was vehicle burglaries, people breaking into cars. There were 37 of those in the month of uh, April. Um, so that's not too surprising. Unfortunately, it is kind of a trend going up right now as the weather gets warmer. So something that we can all do to kind of help mitigate that is just make sure we're taking any kind of valuables out of our vehicles, um, especially at nighttime when we leave them parked. If you have a garage and you're able to park them inside, um, if you're not, make sure you have lighting um, on all night long, or at least, um, you know, throughout the night that that helps deter a lot um, the, the vehicle break-ins. And um, again, just make sure you're taking anything valuable out of the vehicle so that people don't have a reason to want to break into the car. Uh, and unfortunately, it does happen still, even with all those precautions, but th those things will help. Um, so then the next highest call for service was shoplifting. Uh, it's not too surprising for the Sugar House area. Again, there's a lot of um, businesses in, in, in uh, Sugar House. And so that was the next highest with 30. Um, then there were non-reportable accidents. So those are just kind of like minor fender benders that don't get an accident report with the state. There were 29 of those. Um, and then our fourth highest was fraud, the credit card related frauds. And again, that correlates with the vehicle burglaries almost consistently um, when people leave their purses or their wallets, things like that in the vehicles. Um, generally, they take those cards and they immediately go try to use them. It's a pretty common practice. Um, there were 17 of those. And then the last one, which I think is a good number, um, is warrant arrests. There were 15 of those for the month. Um, and that's a, I think that's a good thing because that means our officers are out being proactive. They're out getting, um, you know, felons, people like that off the streets, people that have active warrants. Um, and so that's a good number to have in the top five. So those, those are your top five for the month of April. Um, I, uh, if you want to delve in deeper to the stats or you want to look at anything further, I have the, I've, the first link I put up is for the online stats. You can go in and type in addresses and, and kind of research those. They're kind of interesting to see. And you can look for anywhere in the city. Um, the second link I put up was a bicycle registration. If you own a, if you own a bicycle, please register your bicycle with us. It helps a lot. Um, if it ever gets taken or you ever lose it or something like that, it helps a ton for us to be able to, number one, prove it's your bicycle. And then number two, um, we already have a, uh, history now with that bike and so if something happens we can the report's a lot easier to create um and then i added a link for the online reporting if you have any minor things that happen um like you could do like a vehicle like if your vehicle does get broken into you don't want to have to wait around for an officer to call you or to show up to your to your uh to your house um you can just go online we have an online reporting system where you can do a lot of different types of reports and then if you guys are having any kind of speeding issues or any traffic related issues I put a link in there for that as well. Um, and you can email our motor units directly and they um, they kind of are, um, they're driven by like the, the different complaints they get. And so if you're having a problem in your neighborhood, please email them and they can set something up for you. Um, and then lastly, if you guys can all download the SLC mobile app, that app is really awesome. It, it's very versatile. You can use it to report, um, any camps that might be going up in your neighborhood, you can use it to report any trash that needs to be cleaned up. You can use it for like speeding issues, traffic related issue, or any of those kind of issues that you may have. 
So that's all I have for the group. Does anybody have any questions for me or anything they want to ask me about? You know, in keeping with our tradition here with the online meetings, uh, any questions, just throw them in the chat and um, Detective Fellows, if you could answer those as you see them, that'd be great. And we really appreciate your time and the update. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, continuing on with first responders, uh, I see Bob with the fire department. Uh, do you want to give the next update? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Bob. I'm the captain here at Station 3, Sugar House, right next to Forestdale Golf Course. Uh, just stats for this month, um, as far as Station 3 is concerned, we have 43 fire or fire related calls um, for the month of April. April medical calls, we have 145. And then uh, total to date, um, as of the end of April, 769 um, total calls for Station 3. As far as citywide, um, April fire calls are 1,112. We're already at 2,566 for. Our April medical, 583 total calls for the first third of 2022. Um, so we're up and running for, for getting after it this year. We've got a, a few safety messages to convey to you. Um, one is just water safety and just things that come around with people getting out in the spring months. I know we're in a drought, but there's still a lot of potential uh, for safety in and around either waterways or pools or you know, large bodies of water. So a couple uh, things to mention in terms of safety, the American Cross has provided a couple safety tips. We wanna employ several layers of protection as far as barriers go to prevent access to water. Um, life jackets, close supervision with, with children to prevent drowning. Um, the second would be to have some sort of competency in terms of being able to swim around water, whether it be being able to enter the water, staying afloat, changing position, and uh, swimming distances that will get you to uh, uh, to safety. So trying to encourage people to, to get in there and learn how to swim if you don't know so already, especially those kiddos. And what to do in the event of a water emergency, um, knowing how to help someone that's in trouble um, and you know hopefully uh, limit the potential of you becoming a victim as well when it comes, when it comes to bystander uh, rescue of other victims in the water. And if there's any issues of any sort of water problem, of course, you know, call 911. We'll get our water rescue team out here. We also have every, every crew has a few people or get throwbacks to folks that are in the water that need to get recovered um, or rescued. Aside from that, um, this month is Building Safety Awareness Month. I believe that um, Sally is, is on our newsletter mailer. So she gets the, the links within our mailer and it talks about everything from the uh, links to the, the latest building codes, um, how to prepare your family, how to prepare your home and just some benchmarks for um, community resistance or resilience. So, because it's all kind of all hands on deck to not only rely on, on the fire department because if if something big happens, um, we rely really on the communities to sort of help each other out and figure out what that looks like in terms of using either a CERT team or where areas of refuge will be or just kind of some disaster preparedness. So try to encourage people to wrap their heads around that, how it looks like for your particular community. So aside from that, if anyone uh, um, wants to get on our mailer address and I'll I'll make sure you get on the, the mailer list and you get our monthly community new, newsletter. There's a lot of good information in there and a lot of good stats and a lot of good links that I think are, are beneficial for, for the public. So if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Appreciate you having me. Hey, thank you so much for coming. And for those that kind of touching on swim lessons, just a reminder, swim lessons are offered at Fairmont Aquatic Center. They do a great job down there and the fee is relatively nominal to get that training. So um, next we'll move to Dana McKee, who's got a couple of community announcements and then we'll head to our spotlight on business. 
Hi. Uh, also, the county needs lifeguards. So if you know anybody that uh, wants to be a lifeguard, they really need lifeguards. So um, we are planning moving forward a the community council, the Sugar House Art Walk and the Sugar House Chamber are planning a uh, pub crawl and art walk in conjunction with the art walk next Friday, the 13th from six to nine. Uh, I could use some volunteers if anybody wants to volunteer to stamp stamp cards. Uh, we're going to collect those on the Monument Plaza at the end of the day and give out some prizes. Um, so if anybody wants to volunteer for me for a couple of hours at some of the locations along the pub crawl, that would be really awesome. I'll put contact information as well as the um, event uh, link in the chat in just a bit. Um, all of the participants uh, will have food specials for the night. So we've got Campfire Lounge, Charlie Wing Company, Fiddler's Elbow, Hopkins Brewing, uh, Wasatch Brew Pub, Tea's Auntie, and Sugar House Coffee. And uh, they'll all have a sh uh, they'll all have some sort of food special going on if they have food. Oh, Craft by Proper, that's the other one. And then um, the art walk will be going on as well. You can stop around the various art walk participants, look at the murals, and just generally get out into the into the neighborhood and start, you know, socializing and participating and seeing the businesses. In addition to all of that fun stuff, we will also have a band playing on Monument Plaza, the Seventh Street Strangers. And Yoga Six is going to be doing some yoga activities on Monument Plaza, and we'll also have some sponsors and uh, some prize giveaways and things like that. So I'll leave details in the chat, but if you could share that around to your social media networks, that would be really awesome. If you want to volunteer, I'll put my email in there. That would be great. And uh, just come on out if you get the chance next Friday and enjoy Sugar House. Thank you. Sounds like a great time. Thanks, Dana. Uh, so hey, Brandon, I'll kick it over to you for the spotlight on business. Thank you. And I I, um, I think you said me, right? <laughs> I was trying to talk over you for a second. Not intentional. Um, just to follow up on what Dana was saying, um, even if you're not interested in participating in the pub crawl, um, if you are participating in the art walk, if, um, there will be um, punch cards for those businesses as well. And you will also be um, eligible for the drawings that we're going to have for pub crawl participants. So if you're not into the, the drinking pub scene, that's okay. You can still take part in the art walk and still be eligible for the same um, prizes and, and drawings. Um, quick pivot now. Um, I'd like to welcome our newest chamber member, um, Emily Warren, who's going to talk a little bit about um, her business located right here in Sugar House. Go ahead, Emily. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Hi, you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Emily, and I'm the owner of Emily Warren Physical Therapy, and I'm in Sugar House just off of Penn East. So um, quick survey. Have any of you had back pain before? <clears throat> who has had back pain? Yeah, yeah, common common problem. Um, has anyone had back pain mm, severe enough to where you're like, oh, I might need some intervention like injection, surgery, anything like that? Anybody here? Yeah, few people. Yeah, it's a it's a big problem, and I um, I'm in the business of just helping people um, resolve back pain can avoid surgery and stay active. We live in such an active community here. And so um, it's really important for people to do what they love. So um, I, I just really believe that um, in the U.S. spine care has gone um, in a direction that's really over medicalized and people feel pretty disempowered and lost and hopeless whenever their back pain is really severe and they don't know what to do with it. And I I just want people to know that all tissues in the body heal within 12 weeks, with the exception of a severe disc herniation, which naturally that will heal within six to max of nine months without me putting my hands on someone. So that's just a point of saying all tissues in the body heal within 12 weeks. So why are we having persistent pain problems? And that's just kind of my niche that I've chosen and dug into is just helping people really resolve their back pain, getting to the bottom of what's going on 
And I um, approach things pretty holistically. Um, I assess all factors um, in someone's pain problem, like not just the tissue and structure problem, but also lifestyle stress, nutrition, and the addressing the brain and the nervous system's involvement in pain. And so when it comes to pain, I'm always thinking what's going on with the nervous system brain. And if I'm not treating the brain as well as the tissue and the structure, um, then I'm missing a huge component of someone's care and they're not getting going to get the results that they want, especially when it comes to um, significant severe back pain issues. So, and back pain issues that last longer than 12 weeks. So that's um, a lot of what I do. And I do this all um, through a three-step signature method that I've um, developed and I've worked with people, um, many people here in Salt Lake and then even virtually in my coaching program to help people resolve their back pain and to stay active. And um, I really, really love it. I just really love helping people feel empowered to take control of their pain, give them simple and effective tools that they can use to help treat their pain in their back, because um, there really are some simple methods that have been around for a long time where people can actually um, deal with their pain and um, totally resolve their pain on their own in a framework of not just doing the exercises, but also addressing all the other components as well. So um, yeah, if you know someone in your life that at some point that ever like suffers from severe back pain and they're kind of walking that fine line of, oh, I might need surgery or injections, keep me in mind, feel free to share my info with them. Um, I can always jump on a call and just chat with them and see if they're a good candidate for my program. And um, just bottom line is that I want people to feel empowered with their um, back pain and with their spine care. And I want people to really not be left in the dark as far as what's going on with um, their pain. So um, yeah, and uh, to a couple things that I do offer, I know a lot of people are in a significant amount of pain, especially with a severe um, disc herniation or um, that acute back injury. I do offer um, in-person or in-home visits or um, virtual visits and I can treat via um, the computer. I, I don't even need my hands on them. I can walk them through what to do to help treat their back, especially in that acute phase. So that's a couple things I offer as well as um, just uh, online coaching for back pain relief for with um, outside of the state of Utah. So a couple of my offerings and I can always plug in my, I think my, um, it was in the newsletter, my my website and stuff. But if you guys have any questions or anything, you can feel free to put them in the chat or let me know. My contact info is now in the newsletter, I think. So okay. that's a little bit of what I do. Well, thanks. thanks, Emily. We really appreciate having you as a member of our business community. And um, yeah, I'd encourage you to please drop your info in the chat. And I, okay. I think, uh, you know, there are definitely many of us that could use your services. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so next we'll go to Tim Cosgrove and the Salt Lake City Mayor's Office. Hi, Will. Hi, Sugar House. Thanks for having me. Um, you probably heard the mayor gave her state of the city budget to the city council last night at seven uh, yesterday. Um, she highlighted air quality, homelessness, public safety, equity, transit, and uh, transportation. There will be two public hearings with the city council May 17th and uh, June 7th. Both of those are at 7 p.m. So you can uh, share your, your comments with the city council. Uh, there's a bond question that will be on this year's ballot. It's about an $80 million bond, I believe, with the, with the retirement of the bond that was um, with the Steiner Aquatic Center. And that money uh, wouldn't, that debt service wouldn't begin until 2024. Um, 
So on average, if a resident has a property value of a $520,000 home, they would expect to see about $4.95 a month. Um, there's also a slight uh, tax, property tax increase. This is because Salt Lake City is growing and the demands for services and, and programming is increasing. But I will uh, put the link for the mayor's budget and the timeline in on the chat. I'm happy to go into a little more detail if you have questions. Um, there's a lot going on. And I know uh, Council Member Fowler will probably share some of her priorities as well. Let's see. Also, uh, the mayor's having a press conference with Salt Lake City Police Department tomorrow at 3 p.m on the east side of the city county building. This is to address the recent increase in deadly traffic crashes. Uh, we've had 11 so far, it's just way too many. People are driving too fast. It seems to be more behavioral issues, but there's some um, uh, driving under the influence as well. And she's going to meet with um, representatives from Utah Highway Patrol and look at additional ways to address um, getting people to slow down, drive, be more conscientious with their driving. So you're welcome to attend that press conference. Uh, she also met just <clears throat> as an update from Earth Day, Earth Week we had last week. It's hard to believe it's May already, <laughs> but um, the mayor and Laura Briefer, the director from public utilities came out and have continued to uh, ask our water customers again to voluntarily meet a target reduction of 5% in our daily water use. Uh, Salt Lake City, even with the rain, recent rain, remains at a stage two of its uh, stage five water contingency plan. And we use, <clears throat> on average, uh, 147 gallons of water a day indoors in our homes for bathing and cooking, shaving, toilets, laundry. So they've asked us to participate with a seven, uh, seven gallon challenge, a seven gallon challenge per day. If you can cut from 147 gallons down to 140 gallons, Roughly that will save 5% across the city and that will save us about 157 million gallons of water. And there's some helpful ideas <clears throat> in how to um, enact that conservation. And then and I will include those in the link. Uh, May is also National Bike Month and it's celebrated across the United States and Salt Lake City. There's a lot of biking activities. Uh, the transportation website has um, highlighted them and where they will be going on throughout the month. I know the mayor is participating in one on May 17th from Allen Park down to the city county building. But please watch out for and be careful for our bike riders that are out there. Um, May is a heightened uh, time for people to all be out <clears throat> with the spring and we just have to remember it's shared space and for everybody to enjoy it uh, we have to be conscientious about their use as well volunteer at the living traditions i got a call yesterday from felicia with salt lake city arts council asking for volunteers at the Living Traditions Festival. So if you're interested, uh, May 20th through the 22nd, um, they could use some volunteers. They do a school day uh, facilitation for kids, uh, teaching them activities. And uh, they're also looking for entrance greeters, clean up, set up, take down, and I'll include that in the link. And what else? I'm trying to think if that's, oh, <clears throat> uh, Nick Norris also provided information on the affordable housing overlay and the city's planning division um, that's considering 
zoning amendments to encourage the uh, construction of affordable housing. So I'll put that link in and you're welcome to look at that and, and make some comments as well. I think I tried to cover everything in under 10 minutes. Is that right, Will? You did a great job, Tim. The, okay. You got through a lot in a relatively short amount of time. Um, I think there might be a question or two for you in the chat. I think I saw one from Judy. Um, and then next we'll go to Mike Bagley was able to log on. He's at work. So we're going to quickly go to him for a treasurer report. Mike, are you available? Yep. Got me now. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for thanks for participating tonight. Mike Bagley, Treasurer Report. I just logged in, checked our balance, our U.S. bank account, $7,495.39 uh, as it stands today. Over the month of April, we got uh, received a $1,000 check. That's ACE uh, grant monies that we received. So that's helpful, as well as another small donation. And we had about $121.21 in expenses, and I see no activity at all on the PayPal account. So that's the latest. If there's any questions, I can answer them or take them in the chat. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mike. So next we'll go to Bill Knowles, Knowles for a construction update. Bill, are you on? I am on. Too busy listening to all that great information. Um, okay, I'll try to also uh, make this brief and stay within the time allotted here. Uh, first, good news, a project completed. Yahoo uh, went up there, the apartment complex, Park Avenue uh, is officially open for business. It took a long time finishing up the little, uh, some of the final touches, but they are now open and in fact being occupied. So another uh, residential property uh, filling up with people to put out there on the streets and out into the businesses. So that has been uh, completed. We've got some other projects that are uh, ill, of course in play. And I do have a great, great news on the uh, Sugarmont Apartments, the Boulder Ventures project that's been setting new world records out there. Uh, this one is now we're seeing appliances and the holdup has been getting the appliances for those townhouses needed to be finished on the west side. Of all things that was sitting there, just nothing happening, waiting for refrigerators and, and stoves and uh, microwaves to come in that weren't coming in. Now they're here and they're putting them in and one by one those units are getting done and I can see an end to this. I think it's, it's about to happen uh, probably within the next month or two at the most. And so big celebration planned for that day, I'm sure from a lot of people, especially the owners of that project. Um, Sugar Alley, uh, is there's going to be some activity there coming up and we're waiting to get the time frames on it. Uh, it's somewhere in the next month or so that they will be uh, starting to do the utility hookups into the main water lines, et cetera, running down Highland Drive. And yes, that is what it sounds like. Uh, they will be having to dig into Highland Drive. On that uh, west side, uh, they'll be doing it somewhere near the intersection of Wilmington and Highland Drive. What that looks like uh, traffic wise, we will be, I'm sure, shifting traffic to keep one lane in each direction. We don't have a uh, completed uh, permit process and approval from transportation yet. So I can't tell you exactly what it looks like, but uh, it will be, of course, in the interest of keeping traffic going through there, but it'll be uh, tight and it will be. Um, I think probably something that's going to be taking two to three weeks in terms of getting completed. And uh, that, of course, is a good sign in a way of seeing the end of that project coming around the corner. But uh, that is going to be showing up here uh, sometime fairly soon. And I'm, I'm sorry to say fairly without a more specific 
answer because we're still uh, dealing with number one, the permit process and the contractor giving us a time uh, for that exact break in and, and uh, where that traffic will have to be shifting over to the east side. Uh, but kind of keep your eyes open. That'll be happening here coming up pretty soon. Um, McClellan is another ongoing saga in a way, uh, but it will be happening soon also. Uh, it was supposed to be happening two weeks ago and then last week and this week. And so it is about to happen any minute. Uh, that's where they'll be um, putting in some of the uh, uh, refinements that a lot of you have reviewed and looked at over the last couple of years as they've had several public meetings and uh, a lot of outreach on that subject for that little one block segment between 21st South and Sugarmont. And uh, the folks on the street have been brought up to speed at least of the approaching project, again, without having a specific date as we haven't been given yet from the contractor. But it should be, uh, you, you should see that here within the next week or two. And um, it will be probably taking a good uh, eight to 12 weeks. So a good part of most of the summer getting through that. And um, it's, uh, it, it's going to be really nice when it's through. But again, it's going to be messy getting there. So uh, we'll be giving you updates on that. Uh, traffic, again, we haven't seen the final contractor plan yet. So I don't know how the traffic's going to work through there. And I'm going to tell you right now that I don't see how two-way traffic is going to be possible, uh, but we don't have a traffic control plan yet, and we're just going to have to see and deal with it right when it comes to us as fast as I can get it to you. Uh, and of course, through uh, most of the channels that we've been working with through the community council here. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to say that I'll be surprised if there's not one lane closed in one direction while they do one side and then move to the other. So uh, kind of keep your eyes open for that. Uh, again, we're working with the property owners and businesses in that uh, regard of getting them information as soon as we can, as soon as we get it. I've been out there talking to them and saying it's coming, but uh, I've also given them two Mondays that was supposed to happen that didn't happen. So we're still working towards getting that final, final date. Um, 21st South sewer line, that's been on our horizon for quite a while. Uh, it is now moved back in terms of it just going out for bid. The construction cannot possibly begin before July, probably mid-July. And uh, it's not a bad news situation with that. It's never gonna be a good thing once it gets going in terms of it's gonna be a little bit of a pain, particularly at the Highland, uh, 21st South intersection, uh, but a lot of it's going to be underground. It's not going to be terribly impactful between Highland and 13th East. Uh, and the good news part of this delay is that it's given the Chick-fil-A uh, Chick people time to, uh, we've been working for a year and a half with them in getting uh, this new driveway plan figured out and uh, moved along to where there would be something happening to allow them to take all of their business hopefully off the street at least hopefully a really good part of it and into their parking lot um, so lynn uh, jacobs with transportation landon and myself uh engineering department has been working with these guys for over a year to figure this out and get this darn thing uh cleared up not just for this project but for the future hopefully of that, uh, of that street being more available, both lanes being available to eastbound traffic. So um, they are apparently gonna be now getting under construction. All this stuff has been approved by the city. Uh, now the biggest job was to get a contractor on board, which now they've done, and they expect to start around the first week of June. All of that says that our mid-July timeframe with the sewer project will work out now pretty well in terms of that project being completed and hopefully up in, again, taking that traffic off the street and putting it where it should be uh, on, the, on the parking lot through the drive-through. Um, so let's see where we got. We got one more project that's going to be kicking off here soon. 
and it is also in the city permits process right now, uh, but it will be kicking off within the next couple of weeks, and that's the Alcaterra project uh, right there at the old former 24-hour fitness uh, property, and uh, it's, it's a big project. There's, again, a lot of you have seen the presentations they've made to this group, and uh, it is, uh, we've had some meetings with them, and uh, after some initial presentations of their idea of a traffic plan and, and parking plan uh, for Ashton and Fairmont, uh, we've reworked that a, a few times, which is what is now under review in the transportation department. And uh, it, we've now worked out where we will, in fact, have parking on Ashton. On the north side, we'll have the full block of, of parking as it is right now. That wasn't the case when we started the conversation. And we will have the half on the south side, we'll have the eastern half where it, where it starts just uh, immediately east of their property line and up to Highland Drive, well, at least up to the liquor store uh, drive throughs or drive in. So uh, we are keeping a good part of the parking on that, which was not in the original uh, presentation they made. Pedestrian traffic will be restricted to the south side. So they'll be putting in a pedestrian walkway. Uh, on the south side of basically extending from Fairmont Park uh, to the uh, to Highland Drive on the, well, at least to the end of their property, I should say, uh, as a covered walkway that will be allowing access all the way through that south side uh, to the liquor store and Highland Drive. And so uh, that is pretty much as much as we know now on stuff that's happening and soon to be coming up. And um, I guess if there's any questions, I'll put those in the chat or give me a call. And uh, that's as much as I know right now, Will. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate all the info. Uh, it's but it's I a lot agree. going on and how you stay up on it all, I I don't know, but we appreciate it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be more uh, to talk about here shortly as I think a lot of us are aware. There's a few other things boiling in the pot out there. so. Uh, we'll, oh, wait a minute. I got to back up real quickly. Stop. Uh, the project, the Izzy North project uh, between 5th and 6th East is, in fact, and did has applied and has gotten a lane uh, closure westbound on the outside lane of 21st South for about six weeks starting now, starting this actually Monday uh, through the uh, middle of June. That's again, to do some uh, utility hookups. One of the things that I want you to note here uh, because of some experiences we've had downtown is we in fact made them uh, prove to us that they could get this project completed once they started it. Because we've had a number of these projects that have been started and have come up like, well, we didn't get our part that we needed for the final hookup. We didn't get the part we needed for the concrete lay. We didn't get, and so we're just standing here with the road closed and we can't do anything. So we'll let you know when we're ready. And that has happened to us now over the last several months, a number of times. So we're not doing that anymore. And uh, the contractor has to be able to prove that before they start the job, they can finish the job. So this was the first guy we did this with. <laughs> And uh, said, no, you can't close that lane until you can tell us when you can open it up and make sure you've got everything you need to do that. That's been done. We'll see if it works. But anyway, that is now occurring and, and will be going on again for about five or six weeks. Okay, thanks. Sounds now, like a good policy change. Okay, next we're going to move to Nate Orbach with the Urban Forestry Division. Nate, are you on? Nate, I see you. Are you uh, able to unmute? Okay, maybe we will come back to Nate. Let's uh, go to Lee Bullwinkle and Aaron Benson with Salt Lake City Parks on a Fairmont Park update. Thanks, Will. 
Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. Uh, my name is Lee Bullwinkle. I am the Parks Division Director for Salt Lake City uh, under the newest department, uh, Public Lands. Uh, tonight, first of all, I want to introduce our newest member to our team, Aaron Benson. He's our Parks Operation Manager. And I've asked Aaron to go ahead and give uh, an update on Fairmont Park and uh, we'll turn the time over to Aaron. Yeah, hey everybody, it's great to uh, meet you all. And, and uh, there's some names and faces in here that I know, and it gives me a, makes me a little bit less nervous to see those familiar faces. But by and large, I don't know most of you, so I feel a little bit on the spot. Um, so yeah, I'll jump right into it. A uh, few updates from public lands, parks, and public lands, um, specifically around the Fairmont area and the sugar house area um i'm sure many of you are well aware of the fairmont stream improvements that have taken place over the last couple of years and the intended extension of those improvements through the more western portion of the park um, that have been put on hold uh, they've been on hold we did have plans that were in place and primarily completely through approval um, as far as design, but for budgetary reasons, we just were not able to push play on the whole project. So it went on the back burner for a little bit, but uh, good news is that we did secure the funding once again to go forward with that project. So we're back in conversations with a contractor, trying to get some of those details finalized again and, and a little bit of uh, of uh, figuring out a little bit of the funding part or rather the, the cost, I should say, not the funding. Um, so we look forward to that. I'm not gonna put a date on it, but I, I hope that from what I understand from our planners, we hope to be seeing some construction starting sometime this year. It may be a bit later, but sometime this year is our hope. Um, also in the Fairmont area, we just finished up where the, where the creek actually leaves the park, it, and many of you are probably familiar with this, it runs through a small canal behind several of the homes there, um, separating the homes from the tennis courts and the boys and girls club. That had become severely overgrown over the last few years, and um, there was some concerns over flooding. So we were able to get, uh, get our teams in there this just recently, these last few weeks, and get that really grubbed out and cleaned up. Um, it's looking a lot better. I think we have alleviated any concerns of flooding through that zone. So we're happy about that. Um, back to um, someone else had mentioned uh, birthday a few days, uh, a little bit earlier, took place last week or in the last kind of over the last couple of weeks, really, depending on the event. Um, Tree Utah, we met with Tree Utah and um, they, they, along with Friends of Fairmont, held a tree planting event in Fairmont a couple of Saturdays ago now. And um, we went through and identified 26 locations for new trees. They, they were able to get all of those in within one, one event. Very impressive. And we're very grateful to them. Uh, following the last few severe storms, especially the the, so the, the one in the fall of 2020, there were a lot of trees that were either severely damaged or completely lost in Fairmont. So we're grateful to be getting more trees back in there. Um, still within Fairmont, I suppose maybe all of this is in Fairmont. <laughs> um, as everybody knows, there's, um, there's issues with those experiencing homelessness in the park quite regularly. We are aware of a new uh, encampment within the area to the northeast corner where the fireplace is. Uh, we're working to get that on an abatement list and get that cleared out. Well, I should say we've got it on the list and now it's just time waiting on the time to get it as a priority and get it cleaned up um, and always looking for 
long-term solutions there. Um, speaking of long-term solutions, one of our hopes is, and many of you have probably heard of this as well, the, um, the public lands ranger program that we have coming online fairly soon. Um, we've hired a manager and a supervisor. They are now in the midst of building their team, um, going through literally hundreds of resumes for these positions. Um, I don't envy waiting through that, but they're pretty excited at some of the, um, the potential there. And they are currently, what were the numbers they just gave me? So they'll be hiring 16 total Rangers um, and four of those will be in lead positions. They're working on getting those four positions filled currently. I know they were having interviews just uh, earlier this week. And then from then they'll move on to the final 12 positions. They don't want to put a hard date out on it. But they're hoping sometime mid-summer, maybe July-ish. I don't, again, I don't want to put a date on it, but we're really excited to see that coming online. Um, just for those of you that are not clear on this, um, at this current time, the capacity of these rangers is really going to be more of an educational service, um, uh, community building type relationship. This is not enforcement at this point. They do not have that capacity. Um, and we really want to, we want to approach it this way and, and give, give this an opportunity to work, give community building and education an opportunity to work before we look at more um, enforcement methods. So we'll, we're hopeful and we'll see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> there will be a Friends of Fairmont meeting next Saturday, and I don't know if it's necessarily my place to plug that, but if anybody's interested in further conversation around the park, um, that will be happening next Saturday, 6 p.m., or not Saturday, sorry, next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Um, at the East Pavilion. So feel free to join that. And then finally, um, we're hiring over in public lands. We could always use good help. If you have anybody that you know is looking for employment or may enjoy a job working outdoors, um, please feel free to reach out to me, look up our website, send them our way. Um, I think that's about all I got, so thank you. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Really appreciate it. If anybody has any questions for Aaron, feel free to drop it in the chat. Lee, did you have anything else that you wanted to discuss? Nope, we're just uh, really excited, looking for uh, spring. And uh, yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, well, thanks. And for those that love our local parks and a uh, little bit of local history, um, we'll be meeting with the Sugar House Park Authority and Lee next uh, Thursday on the 12th, or no, not, yeah, on the 12th, May 12th, um, to discuss the Joe Hill historical marker, which is something our community council has supported in the past. So uh, log into that meeting if you're interested, should be, uh, should be a good time. So next, uh, we're going to go back to Nate Orbach with Urban Forestry and see if he is available now. Is my microphone working now? Can everyone hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Nate. Great, glad to hear it. Apologies for those uh, technical difficulties. And I'm also going to try to share my screen. Nope, can't do that. Okay. No worries here. We just have a uh, quick little update we're giving to all the community councils about um, what uh, urban forestry is up to right now. And um, really this time of year, what we're up to is planting lots of trees. Um, hey, Nate, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay, let me see if it works. That working? Looks good. 
Awesome. Like I said, just a quick little presentation on what uh, Sugar House looks like in terms of the urban forest, what we're up to and uh, where we're going. Um, as you can see here, Sugar House has by far the most trees of any of the community councils because it's the largest uh, by far. There's almost 15,000 uh, public trees in the Sugar House neighborhood. Um, and the top five species are listed there. I'm not gonna read all five of them, uh, but if you're interested, those are the most common species you'll find um, mostly on the streets in Sugar House. And uh, then, yeah, the main focus of what I wanna talk about is um, planting trees. That's what we're doing right now. We're always planting new trees this time of year. And again, in the fall, um, here's a, they're really small. It's hard to see them. If, if anyone wanted to know exactly where all the dots are, I'm happy to share this information uh, with you in a different way, but just gives you an idea of where all the newly planted trees in 2020. And again, in 2021, whereas you can see almost a thousand new trees were planted uh, within the Sugar House Community Council in those two years. Um, so lots of new trees going in there and um, what do they need? They need to be watered. Um, you know, we are in a drought, but currently uh, the city's messaging is uh, focus your watering on trees and shrubs and away from your lawn. So um, those newly planted trees do need to be uh, watered. <clears throat> Excuse me. They need to be deep watered, usually two, two times a week, three times a week if it's really hot in the summer. Um, and we have, you may have noticed uh, around the neighborhood, switched back to uh, the watering bags. Um, we think we have an improvement for the issues we were seeing with them. So, and we have two different types of bags. So if you had a newly planted tree or you see them, you may see one of two different types of bags, either those green bags that we were using in the past, um, but we've put a sprinkler pipe in there to try to keep the, uh, bag the wet bag from sitting on the trunk all the time it was causing a lot of issues with rotting away the bark so we hope that cause uh that fixes that issue we also have a brown donut type watering bag they both work the same way um, they just slowly drip water and uh, the the main purpose of them is to keep the roots wet in between watering so as it says here lawn lawn sprinklers are generally not enough for watering a newly planted tree um, they Lawn sprinklers are designed for roots that are, you know, within the first few inches of soil and those tree roots are a lot deeper. So direct watering with a hose and that watering bag are really the most effective ways to water newly planted trees. Um, and yeah, again, focus your watering on trees, shrubs, etc. They're uh, a lot more harder to replace and more valuable than the, uh, the lawn is. If anyone has questions about xeriscaping, um, we're getting a lot of questions about that. Feel free to give Urban Forestry a call and we can help you work around um, either mature or newly planted trees uh, and how that works with your zero scape. And then a quick update. We know there's a lot of people out there that we've promised that will have uh, their tree pruned. Um, we, we still will prune that tree, uh, but there's currently 2,700 or so trees um, on our queue for pruning uh, and we have five crews to do it, two, two people on each crew. So please be patient with us. We know it, everyone is uh, being patient and it's going to take a while. Um, we are working as expeditiously as possible to get through that entire queue. Um, but yeah, again, there's a lot of trees out there and they all need the same level of pruning. So it's not a fun game of how long can we make people wait. We you know would love to make that queue disappear tomorrow. Um, but we're working through it as fast as we can. It's just a FYI that um, we're, we have a lot of backlog and the, the storms over the winter um, did not help. We had to spend two full months uh, cleaning up down branches instead of getting caught up on our pruning backlog, which is usually what we like to do in the winter. Um, and then the last little thing here is, uh, you know, how can residents of this, this community council, this neighborhood help uh, the urban forest? Um, keep an eye on the newly planted trees that you saw on that map. There's another 150 being planted right now in Sugar House all, all over um, the Sugar House area. So uh, keep an eye on them. Encourage neighbors, um, if they have empty park strips, to uh, request free tree planting. Um, if you see dead trees, you can report them to us and we'll get them taken out and replaced. And then again, um, help distribute that watering information um, to your community, your neighbors, help your neighbors who are unable to water um, those, those trees. 
that's really all I had. Just a quick update on uh, where where the urban forest is at. And uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll hang out in the chat for a few minutes. Hey, Nate, that would be great. Thank you very much. I think uh, Sally might have some questions for you. And yeah, we'd appreciate it if you could answer those. I sure will. And I will stop sharing. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you. So next, we've got a update on McClelland. Uh, are Ramin and Leah from Salt Lake City Engineering on? Yeah, hello to everyone. Thank you, Will, for your time. Um, this is Ramin. I'm with Salt Lake City Engineering Division. Uh, as uh, most of you guys probably know, that we are starting the McClellan Street Phase 2A project. Uh, it's the McClellan Street between 21st South and Sugarmont. Uh, we are just adding some bulb outs and stuff to the road. We are just going to make it more walkable, and then we're going to have some uh, on street dining for some of those businesses on the east side. And then we are adding some more uh, parallel parking. Well, not adding, but it's just going to be some parking pockets with those planters and stuff. Uh, the design is mainly, if you're going to have any question, that uh, would be a good question for the transportation department. But as far as the construction goes, we are having uh, some irrigation design changes that we are uh, working with the contractor to get an answer on that as soon as possible. We are expecting to start the construction hopefully here in the next few weeks, most likely, you know, the last week of May. And you are gonna get, you know, all the businesses, the resident, everyone is just gonna get to know about it like probably a week ahead of the construction. And uh, during construction, we are gonna, you know, just like our other project, we're gonna send out flyers to the, uh, to the business owner resident if there's gonna be any closure, which we are not expecting. We are going to most likely have like, you know, both lane open to the traffic, how the way we are going to manage the construction. We are not doing uh, much with the utilities. Um, so we are not going to expect any utility disruption as well. And uh, we are going to try to be out there uh, as soon as possible before the other projects uh, with public utilities starts on Highland Drive and 21st. That's the sewer work. So we are gonna work that out with public utilities. So we make sure we're gonna have the minimum traffic uh, disruption or basically conflict uh, of the two projects uh, out there. Um, that's all I have to say about this project. And uh, if you guys have any question, feel free to send me uh, an email or Tom Millar, which he is in charge of this project uh, with transportation division. Uh, if you have any design, for, uh, basically question that's he, he's the, your best contact if you have any question during construction before the construction regarding construction i am your person thank you so much for your time and uh, yeah if you have any question i'll be here thank you okay thanks for joining us um next up we'll go to jenna carver with salt lake city transportation about the 600 east cip update jenna are you on yeah, I'm right here. Um, hi, this is uh, this is actually the it's called the Slow Down West Sugar House as a constituent CIP project. Um, it's been going for unfortunately a couple of years. Um, the constituents put together an application to slow down traffic in their neighborhood. The bounds of the project are. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. Can you enable it? Give us one second. We're working on it. Okay. It should be good. Now. I hate I hate trying to describe addresses because if you like me, you're going to sit there and try to think. That might help a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you a map that probably won't help very much anyways. Okay, let me get the right one. Okay, uh, I have to share. Okay, are you seeing it? We are. 
okay, so this is the map, and of course you can't see any labels or anything, but this is 2100 South, this is the D's, um, this is 600 East, um, coffee shop right here, um, 500 East. Um, and the project goes from 2100 South right here, um, South, you see the freeway there, uh, the S line right here, goes all the way south to 2700 South, and this is Nibley Golf Course. So it's this entire huge block. So that's what the application was. Um, the, their main concern uh, that we heard was people coming off the freeway and wanting to avoid this left turn and cutting through by dancing cranes or this other street. Coming here, you can't turn left here and coming down these streets and through. Um, but also speeding on 600 East, which is a neighborhood byway uh, has priority for bikes. And then on all these other streets, um, just cutting through and speeding on 600 East. Uh, so we sent out a survey, uh, looked at some options, um, looked at uh, bulb outs, speed humps and driver feedback signs. Uh, the project budget is 150,000. So we can't get a lot of bulb outs for that. And driver feedback signs really aren't that effective. So what we're looking at is speed bumps, uh, speed humps, um, and uh, speed cushions on 600 East. So we had this project ready to go uh, with a number of speed humps on 600 East. Um, unfortunately, costs have gone up quite a bit. Uh, so right now we're looking at five speed cushions on 600 East and you can see them spaced along here. And then speed bumps on the cross streets. We have Commonwealth, Elm, uh, <laughs> Wilmington, they're very small. Um, the blue here is an alternate, so we'll put it out to bid and depending what the bid comes back at, if we have enough money, we'll do these alternate locations. So this is Wilmington to the east. Um, Simpson, we've got one, they're really hard to see on here. This is really designed for, uh, <clears throat> for the bid package. Um, one on Stringham, that's in an alternate. We, we have a green, a green alternate and a blue alternate, so different levels. Uh, Driggs, uh, one over here, this gets quite a few. We did do traffic counts and looked at the ones that get the most cut through and, and prioritize those streets on Warnock Avenue. Um, this one, I had to take it out. I, I had to go through and take out the ones that had the least amount just due to budget. So that was our plan and we were ready to go out to bid and fire department said, uh, wait a minute, we don't know if we like these or not. So um, <clears throat> we have another project in the Capitol here, Hill area well, where they're looking at putting in similar things. So with that project, they've used their money to order rubber test humps of these same same type devices and are putting those out in the fire departments. They're gonna put them not on the street, but in the, in the yard and the fire department's gonna come out and test them, um, hopefully this week. And that is, uh, you guys probably know Kyle Cook, he's, he's spearheading that. So if you can see, I was gonna show you, um, that's not the right one. These are what the speed cushions look like. Uh, sorry, I'm using my, there we go. They have cut out, so it's a speed bump with, or a speed hump with cutouts. So the fire truck can veer over and go through it without going over the hump. So we space these so, so that it's equal to the wheelbase of the fire truck. We ask what fire trucks they use in the area and design it so that it fits whatever fire truck they use and they can go over it without having to go over the hump. And this is showing a rubber one. These would be concrete. 
that we'd put in. We're, te we're going to test the rubber ones to see if they like them. And if they approve it, then we'll proceed with the project. If not, then we'll talk about what we need to do at that point. Um, the good thing about these is bicyclists can also go through that, that little gap there and then they don't have to go into the humps. So right now we're waiting for fire department, hopefully in the next week or two, to give us a go ahead to put this project out to bed. So that's the update on that, that project. As soon as we know that, we will send out this map to the neighborhood, let them know uh, where the locations are. Um, I showed you that map that shows the locations. They have not been, um, th these are approximate location. They will be filled, verified exactly where they go uh, before they're put in. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Sounds good, thank you. If you could answer uh, those questions in chat, that would be great. Okay. And we're gonna stick with uh, Salt Lake City Transportation and go to Lynn Jacobs next. Lynn, hey, well, I am, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. I also would like to be able to share my screen if you can set me up for that, that would be great. We'll work on that now. Awesome, and so I'm here tonight just to talk about the bigger projects that we've got coming down the line and just to give everyone a little bit of a status update and quick overview. Um, I've just got a few slides to share with everyone. I know there's probably lots of questions you have about all these projects and uh, definitely uh, put your questions in the chat or email me and I'm happy to kind of coordinate on, on all of that. Looks like I can, man. looks like I can screen share now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, it's a little awkward with the multiple screen set up. I'll be looking over here while I'm talking to you. So my apologies in advance, but um, we've got several really big construction projects on the horizon. And so I'm going to kind of talk about each of them and where we're at in the status and our timing and kind of where the schedule is with each and every one of them. So the first one I'd like to talk about a little bit tonight is our 1300 East project. This is scheduled for 2024. So not next year, but the year after. And so we'll be out um, rebuilding this roadway. And the scope of this project starts at 2100 South and extends to the South. And we're hoping that we're actually gonna be able to, to get all the way to 33rd South with our improvements. Now we may not be able to get quite that far South uh, based on our funding. We um, got federal funding to do this project. When we, when we applied for that funding, we got enough to get us to about the city limits with Mill Creek. It'd be really nice if we can work and in, in, in find the money to get that little piece between where we'll end and 33rd South, just to make it complete. If we don't do that with, with this project, you'll see a future project. They'll come in and fill in whatever gap is left there. Um, we just had a public open house last, uh, about a week ago, or I guess it's, gosh, it's been two weeks already. It's, it's going so fast on April 20th. Um, but when we were at that open house, we presented a lot of really great materials about what we're planning on doing. Um, and all of those materials are available online. And so if you go to our website, 1300eastslc.com, you'll see the website pop up and there's a little button that says feedback. If you click on that, it will show you all the materials that we shared at the open house. And then there's a form at the bottom that you can give us comment as if you were at the open house. So for those of you who missed it, or who weren't able to attend, we would love to hear your comments. Um, the comment period will be open through May 20th. And so we still have a couple of weeks. So take the survey if you haven't, get us your comments, spread the word, let other people know. We're, we're really just trying to get all the information we can on, on feedback on our design so that we can take that into consideration as we move forward. Um, this project is in preliminary design stage. So we're just at a concept level. We got an idea of what we wanna do with the project and we've kind of worked through the big picture stuff. What will happen with this project is we'll advertise for final design, um, probably June, July, maybe August, and then we'll bring in a final designer and sometime later this fall, we'll start working on final design. That will extend all the way through next year till about November. And at that point, we'll advertise it for construction and then construct it in 2024. So exciting things coming with this. Um, we are doing a lot of great improvements. We're improving how the lanes connect with each other a little bit in the Sugar House area. It should help traffic flow and improve uh, people's commutes as they're approaching the freeway. We're hoping to re reduce some of the congestion in that area. We're not adding any travel lanes. We're just kind of making it more optimal. We're, we're kind of making it a little more efficient. Um, we're also adding a lot of walking and, and biking infrastructure for people so that we'll have 
connectivity on 13th East that doesn't exist right now for people who would like to walk or people who want to ride, ride a bike or take their family for a bike ride. So that's a, an exciting thing that's coming up and we'd love to hear everybody's feedback on it. Website's right here, 1300eastslc.com. And then if you have, if you want to reach out to us directly, there's a phone number and an email address. You can, you can reach us that way as well. The second project I'd like to highlight tonight is our Highland Drive 1100 East project. And the scope of this project begins at I-80 and goes just north of 1700 South. We have a separate project that goes from 1700 South all the way up to 900 South. And so we've got this massive uh, project planned to rebuild Highland Drive and 1100 East through that entire stretch. Uh, we've talked with this group about this project quite a bit in the past. Uh, we went through our concept design last year. We are now working towards our 70% and final design right now. And so we've got kind of the big picture figured out and we're working on all those little details that make it work and, and, and working out all the little nuances. Uh, we've had a lot of meetings with property owners, with business owners. Those will continue to happen. Um, again, for this one, it's actually slated for construction next year. So this fall, we will hopefully wrap up our design and put it out for bid for construction. Um, and so all summer long, you're gonna continue to see us engaging with uh, this group, with other groups in the community. Um, we've been doing a lot with the chamber and really appreciate their help getting us connected with businesses. We had several roundtable meetings back in February and again in April. Our next meeting with that group will be in June or July, and it's going to be all about construction impacts and talking about how to, how to get through that and how to not only survive construction, but thrive during construction. And so that's coming up and uh, we're looking forward to that. We did just have a meeting with residents um, in that Ramona to Wilson area just uh, last week. Uh, went pretty well. We had a handful of people show up, got some really good feedback. We're still taking that into consideration and we may make a few adjustments to our design as a result of what we heard that night. Um, so uh, again, our websites are listed here, our phone number, our email address. Feel free to reach out to me with questions or if you're not sure what's going on, more than happy to talk about it with anyone. This is not my project, but I wanted to mention it tonight because this will be something really impactful for a lot of us and we just need to be aware this is coming. So the um, Public Utilities is doing a, a sewer line capacity upgrade this summer between 1100 East Highland Drive intersection to Yuma Street. And, and uh, with that, there will be construction on 21st South this summer. So everyone, if you're not aware of this project, please uh, go to the website, get aware of all the, the news, get sign up for email updates. It's going to be important to kind of keep track of, of this because there will be construction impacts on 21st South this year. Um, it's out for advertising right now. We're looking for a contractor. We'll get bids back in the next couple of weeks and then hopefully construction might happen as soon as July. So that's coming right down the line. Finally, that same stretch of 2100 South, uh, well, at least a portion of it from 700 East to 1300 East, is slated for construction in 2025. Um, and so we're taking a, a hard look at this roadway. This is a challenging project uh, and, and will be kind of the last of these major construction projects we've got going on in Sugar House. So um, we are just now at the very beginning of the, of the concept development stage for this project. Uh, we hired a consultant team to help us get through this. Uh, we barely signed the contract with them yesterday or today. Uh, so it's just barely, barely got, its, got, got started. It'll take about a month or two for that consultant team to get their legs underneath them. Their first task, they go out and they evaluate all the existing conditions. You're gonna see us out doing some survey work where we get crews out there actually measuring things and, and making sure we know what's out there. Uh, we've collected a lot of traffic data. We're gonna continue to collect more traffic data. Um, I need to look at pedestrian volumes at the 21st South Highland Drive intersection. We heard a lot about that with our Highland Drive 11th East project. So we're taking a deeper dive on how we can make that intersection better for pedestrians. Um, and, and so we've just, we're, we're kind of at the very beginning stages of this project. Um, in a few months, you'll see us kind of come back to you and, and, and start to engage on this project. And we'll probably, we'll have a lot of open houses. We're gonna have a lot of meetings with, with a lot of the folks on this call and uh, just looking forward to engaging with all of you. We really need to work through this and, and get it right. This is such an important roadway. And so we're gonna be spending all summer long into the fall talking 21st South and trying to figure out what we're gonna do with this road when we rebuild it. So 
that's kind of where that project's at. And it, it's exciting and scary at the same time. And I know how important this roadway is to everyone on this call. So uh, looking forward to engaging with everyone on that one. And Will, I think that's all I've got for you tonight. If anyone has questions, put them in the chat. Happy to respond there. I'll put my contact info in the chat as well. And if you want to talk offline, I'm always happy to have a call or meet or talk with anyone on this call. So thank you, Will. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Uh, really glad to hear we're going to have a robust public process on 21st. I think that'll that'll be an important piece, like you said. So um, just wanted to check with Judy and Sally, see if we had any reports from our subcommittees. Yes, I have something. Um, on May 11th, the Planning Commission is meeting to discuss affordable housing incentives. And if you read the emails from me, there's an awful lot of detail in that, where you could take your single family lot and add another house or a little larger lot and maybe add four units, as long as one of those units is 80% uh, AMI, uh, deed restricted for lower income people. And this is pretty controversial. There's a lot of detail in it. And it affects probably most every property in Sugar House. So the meeting is May 11th. It starts at 5.30. It's at the city building on the third floor and it's now in person. I think you can still watch it online, but you can't speak if you wanna talk and tell them what you think. Or you could go to the Sugar House website under the land use section under committees and read the full plan there. And then there's a comment form or you could write directly to the planner. Thank you. Thanks, Judy, appreciate that. Sally, did you have some info? Um, I just actually want to give a shout out to Shane and Yvonne and Yvonne's husband, Jerry, for coming and helping with the um, Sugar House Community Council aid station for the marathon. It was a rainy, awful day, but luckily we had enough volunteers. We had a, a new couple that I had never met before. And so it was, it was really, we really had a fun time, but I appreciate Sugar House Community Council still stepping up and providing an aid station. I think we are probably at least six years of doing this. And so um, if you haven't done it in the past, kind of mark your calendar for next year, because it's always the third uh, Saturday in um, April, I guess. Um, and it, and it was very fun. And I really appreciated Shane and, and Yvonne and Jerry coming and helping out. So um, the other thing is just, again, I know it's been mentioned, but uh, unfortunately it's on the same night as the uh, Judy's, that meeting for Judy's, but um, if you have a chance and can come by Fairmont Park and uh, meet some of the city uh, public lands representatives and see what's in the future for the city parks and trails this summer, it, it'd be awesome if you could come and do that. It's on the 11th, May 11th at six o'clock. So I think those are the two main things we have going on right now. We'll be looking for volunteers to help with goat heads on Parley's trail. <laughs> That's always a project. Goat heads never go away, um, puncture vine. But last year we had a gr great group of volunteers who took care of the trail all the way from Parley's um, Canyon all the way to State Street and took care of goat heads off those trails. So if you're a dog walker and you don't want your dogs getting um, goat heads in their paws or you like to ride a bike and you don't like getting a flat tire, then this is the project for you. So just let me know. Okay, thanks, Sally. Uh, next, we'll go to Brandon for an update on or update from the chamber. Thanks, Will. Uh, <clears throat> mostly wanted to reiterate some of the things that Dana had said earlier um, for the upcoming May thirteenth spring fling and pub crawl and art walk. Um, we are still in need of sponsors for um, gift baskets that we can use for the drawing. So if you know. Uh, fellow business members within the community that would be interested in that, um, please send them our way. As well as we do have a few spots on Monument Plaza for um, uh, space availability for businesses that want to come out, maybe set up a little table, tell folks about what they uh, do, what they specialize in. Obviously, that um, spot is going to be a pretty high trafficked area. 
So we hope to get um, a few of the local businesses in there. And again, if uh, you are interested or know somebody interested, please send them to Dana or I. Awesome, thanks, Brandon. Uh, next, we'll go to council member, Amy Fowler. Hello, everyone. It's so good to see all of you. Um, maybe I should turn the light on. Sorry about that. Um, a couple of things. Um, as many of you know, we are deciding on our redistricting map. Uh, it doesn't look that District 7 will change too much. Um, we may be adding from... I mean, last night, um, 2100 South and 17th East, upwards to 15th East, around there. So we may be adding a few blocks and then getting rid of a couple of blocks um, up on Parley's Way is what right now the council has sort of looked at. You can <clears throat> definitely look at that map uh, on the city council's website and we have a redistricting map that you can look at and kind of play with. So if there's something that is definitely a, an issue that you have, I, I would encourage you to reach out to me and our staff about the redistricting but we are set to vote for those redistricting um, maps in two weeks. So, um, and, and in reality, it doesn't change Sugar House that much. It doesn't change District 7 that much. Um, we, by state law, we have to have a certain percentage of population within each district. And then by the county, we have voting precinct districts. And so we're trying to make sure that voting precincts are not split. And we're trying to make sure that populations are the same for every district, or at least within a 5% plus or minus. Um, and, and because our population has grown in the same amount as everybody else's, we don't really change that much. So there might be a couple blocks here and there. I encourage you to look at last night's meeting if you're interested in redistricting and what that looks like. Um, again, I don't think that it has a lot of effect on, on, I hope who your representative is in the next four years after after this. So, but I do encourage you to look at it. Um, we are, last night we heard the mayor's budget. Um, so we're in the midst of budget season. Um, there are a lot of things that uh, the mayor has proposed and that I, I am excited about and some things that I think that we're all going to have to take a look at. Um, and so for the next six weeks, we will be in budget season. And uh, I, again, I hope that all of you will reach out to me with your thoughts about budget season or, or what the mayor's proposed budget is. I think that um, one of the big things for me is uh, how you all feel, the people that I represent, about um, a geo bond, a general obligation bond for parks and parks maintenance, um, how we feel about diverting sales tax to the maintenance of parks and trails. I think it would be helpful for me to, to understand where all of you are in and how you feel about that so that I can represent you. We, we are in, the mayor is 
proposing a property tax increase of 4.9%. Um, so I would like to hear how residents feel about that as well. So I can represent you in the best way. We have, as I said, we do have the next six weeks to talk about this and to actually adopt a budget. Um, I would like to say that boards and commissions, we um, have a lot of boards and commissions and we're looking at how we make sure that boards and commissions um, are sta staffed, I guess, or how people are, <laughs> are utilizing those boards and commissions. And I would encourage everybody that if you're interested in something, please apply. Um, we have one of the most active community councils in this entire city, I would guess in the entire state. Um, and I know that all of you give so much of your time and energy to be here on these community councils, but we also need you on a city level. So. There are some openings in different boards and commissions. Um, so please consider applying. If you are interested, please contact me and we can work with you on um, getting that application. Um, I want to talk about traffic calming. Um, we did fund the 600 East traffic calming and I think many of you may have seen what I said in the chat. We funded that 600 East traffic calming um, project, the CIP project, almost three years ago. I'm trying to think, I think it was three years ago and still nothing has been done. So, we just had a tragic accident. We actually had three tragic ac accidents within Salt Lake County um, on Monday, Sunday and Monday. And I think that we can do more. And I'm gonna push for doing more for traffic calming. Um, I do want to say thank you to all of SLCPD. I unfortunately ran the half marathon on um, a couple of Saturdays ago, whenever that was. We had every weather possible, but at, at every corner there was an SLCPD officer directing traffic that I at least got to say thank you to. and. Um, it helped make that run less terrible. Uh, so, and, and all the volunteers, everybody that was out for the marathon, for the half marathon, um, for the 5K, the 10K, everyone who put that on. It is such a wonderful SLC event that, um, again, unfortunately I participated in, but it, it is wonderful in all the ways. I just, I've, I don't know that I can still walk correctly. Um, and then the last thing, there was something else I was going to say. I also want to thank everybody um, from Tree Utah and the Friends of Fairmont for our wonderful Earth Day event that we had last set, last Sunday. Um, we, it, we had so many people come out to Fairmont and you know, I know that, that there have been problems in the past at Fairmont, but it is by far one of the best parks in all of Salt Lake City. And it's beautiful, the pond, the, the walkability of it, the pickleball, the, the dog park, all of the things that we have done at Fairmont. And it is because of volunteers, it's because of friends of Fairmont. It's because of Tree Utah. It's because everybody comes out and actually cares about our neighborhood park. And it has, it's, it was a lovely event. And I want to thank everybody for being there. Um, 
And I want to thank Tree Utah and Friends of Fairmount for really letting us kind of piggyback on top of their their event that they had already planned. And I'm going to go check on my tree, Michelangelo. Me and my fellow volunteers named him Michelangelo. Um, there is one tree named. Hold on. Bruno and one tree named Eli. So we've all named our trees out there and I encourage everybody to go take a walk through Fairmont and look at all the work that our fellow neighbors have done um, for our neighborhood. So with that there, I will answer any questions in the chat as I'm told to do. And uh, please again, reach out anytime to me and I, I thank you all. Thank you, council member, appreciate it. Um, that wraps up our agenda for the night. Uh, so, you know, big thanks to Brandon Hill for, you know, carrying me through this and uh, all of you for putting up with me. I know I'm, uh, I'm no Landon. So um, I appreciate, appreciate it everyone and uh, have a great night. We'll see you next month. Thank you.